Objects. And name objects are like structs from C family languages and define a grouping of fields. Okay, so we have a struct. Okay. They are by default traced by the garbage collector. So there is no need to explicitly free them when allocated. Exactly. In C language, they will live on a heap and you want to dispose of them manually. Here you don't have to. So we type animal again, exported animal that is an object and it exports name and species as a string. And I guess it doesn't export the age. Okay. This is self-explanatory. Therefore, we can create a procedure like sleep uh, that takes an animal. In this case, it will be, uh, we need to specify that we'll be modifying the animal. Okay. And therefore we take animals age and increment it by one. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. It's simple. But you're dead and we take an animal and we just reach oh, out. Bad example should be is dead. Okay. You need better names. So is dead. And basically, if age is more than 20, then bam. And then we create first animal called Carl. Okay. And we say that Carl is, again, uh, mutable. Carl is a cricket instance. So Carl is an animal where name is Carl. Species is L Glama and age is 12. Okay. Or we can put it in place where the type will be inferred, right? Because we're not specifying it explicitly here. This will be inferred here that it's an animal. Oh, he's 23 years old, so he will be considered dead. <laughs> so we can assert that Carl assert that Carl is not dead. Okay, which will be true because it's only 12 years, years old. And then we do four from zero to ten. We ask Carl to sleep, and after that we check that it actually is dead. Mm -hmm, and that should work. Okay, this example is pretty simple. I like it. Object types are declared in a type section as usual. They can be exported and individual fields can also be exported. Fields can be safely exported without violating encapsulation because call syntax is equivalent between them. Initially, Carl is created on the stack and initialized to zeros or empty string in case of fields of type string. So its value is, you know, empty name, uh, empty string for species and zero. So this is right here, right? We initialized it already as that empty one. And only here we just do that. So that's that. It is mutable. So that means that the, co the contents of Carl can be changed. This also means it can be passed to functions that require a variable parameter. Yeah, it, if, if we specify here, I want that. The a to be a mutable animal, you can call other functions that would also want the mutable animal and just pass it on. Okay. Joe is also created on the stack, but its contents are immutable and cannot be changed. Yeah, because it's let. So you wouldn't be able to pass it to, to some like sleep. Attempting to do so, say through joe.h57 will fail and, and with an error at compile time. Okay, I really like it. I really, really like it because in JavaScript or, or many other languages, again, you would specify, you know, create an object. And like in JavaScript, you say const uh, and create an object. The only, th the only thing you can't, can't do is you can't, you can't simply reassign different object to that constant. So, you know, you can't change the pointer, but you can still change the values of the object, the, you know, the the, the, uh, the properties. So I like that protection. And I wonder if it's enforced in some various interesting ways when you pass it on. I think they are because you need to specify that if you're doing something on an animal, you need to specify if it's going to be modified or not. Hmm. This might make it really readable of what's going on and when something's going to change. I really like that. The whole has side effects, has no side effects thing. Awesome. So let mittens is reference to animal and create a new animal. Okay. So we have ref, whatever that is. Let me switch that song. It's just so annoying. Okay. So we have a new syntax here with ref. I guess it's a reference to animal. Interesting. And a new, I guess we create a new instance of animal. Oh, because I guess we, if you want to have a pointer to it, we already need to have it existing. If it would just do nothing like just that, that means that reference would be empty and therefore this will be an empty pointer, whatever you call it. Hmm. And here we can say mittens.name is mittens and all that. So because we have only a reference to an animal, 
I guess that means that we can modify it. Mittens is a reference to an object allocated on the heap. The value of mittens cannot be changed. So mittens can never point to anything else. Also, this is like you would have constant in JavaScript. But the value that mitten is pointing at can and is changed from the default initialization value of zeros. Also, you might, you might ask whether there is more concise way of initializing reference types. And there is if you give the reference type a name. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, so you can basically specify that animal reference is ref animal. And therefore you can say, oh, oh, I see. So when we have it specified like that, we can just say, hey, spot is animal reference, blah, blah, blah. And therefore we can just call it straight here instead of doing this whole dance with new animal. Ooh, that's cool. That's very interesting. In many cases, it, it is only wanted to have the object be a reference type, which is possible by declaring it as a reference object. Okay, did they mention anywhere? Are like structs. They are default trace, so they're not. Okay, so type thing as reference object, and you just define it like, like in the normal one. It's just a reference, and it will always be a reference. So let's again ask AI. So please explain how the objects are passed around in NIM. I'm mostly interested about difference differences between ref type and just type. And NIM objects can be passed around in different ways. And the choice between using ref type or just type depends on the desired behavior and ownership semantics. Now let's explore the differences between ref type and type. When you declare a variable or a parameter of a specific object type, it means you're working with an object directly and the object is stored on the stack. Oh, why didn't I mention that in that tutorial? Come on. So we basically pass it around as a value. Every time we pass it into a function, it's considered a, you know, a copy of it. Passing an object uh, of type as an argument to a procedure or assign it to another variable creates a copy of the object. Each copy has its own independent set of fields. Okay. Modifying the fields of an object passes type only affects that particular copy and the object does not impact the original object. Okay. Objects of type have value semantics, meaning they are passed by value and have fixed size determined by their fields. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have a person with name and age, procedure modify age, so ph 30, and the thing will be unchanged. Okay, but will it throw an error that we're trying to modify it? Probably not, because sometimes it will be handy to just modify the whole thing as you're working on it, and then just return it because it's just a copy, just returning another copy. Hmm. Uh, so let's try it. Let's paste it, right? Ah, okay. It cannot be assigned to. So this won't compile. Interesting. Hmm. So I already know what our ne next question will be. And then a uh, reference type. Reference type represents a reference to an object type. It is a pointer that points to the actual object stored in the heap. When you declare a variable or a parameter of the ref type, you're working with reference to the object, not the object itself. Passing ref type as an argument to a procedure or assign uh, or assigning it to another variable creates a new reference pointing to the same object on the heap. Multiple references can point to the same object. Okay, and I guess the garbage collection just counts the, how many references there are to, to, to the object on the heap, and that's how it decides when to actually delete the memory. Modifying the fields on an object through ref type affects the actual object on the heap, and all references pointing to that object will observe the changes. Objects of ref type have reference semantics, meaning they are passed by reference and can be shared among multiple parts of, of the program. So here we're using declaring as a res, ref object, and therefore we can modify it and everything will change. Okay, great. So what is the difference between calling, uh, between defining a proc that takes an argument ref type versus var type? And let's just do a list like a proc do, I don't know, do something, right? And we have, what you call it? A, and we define it as var person. Copy it. Let's just do a code block. We have this and we just copy another one where we would have ref. And third one, can you do var ref? Oh, let's do var person ref. And we can just quickly copy some of that. Okay, person, which will be object of that. And then we define person ref ref person because I recall we could do something like that one two three whatever 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 okay because I don't know compiler would even learn that Let, let's see what the chat says about it so the main difference between using ref type and var type as procedure arguments lies in how the object is passed and modified within the procedure let's analyze each case so when we pass it as 
var, and this is just a normal object. We're using var as a parameter modifier and means the procedure expects a mutable reference to an object of type person. The procedure can modify the fields of the person object directly. The var parameter is passed by reference, so any modification made to a inside the procedure will affect the original object passed as the argument. Person object must be initialized before being passed to the procedure. Okay. For example, we have the person and we do something with it. Okay. It's just a, you know, uh, mutable. Then we have the reference. So when you're using rev, parameter means procedure expects a reference. It can modify the fields. The ref parameter is passed by value, but it points to the same object on the heap. Modifying A inside the procedure will affect it. Mm -hmm. The ref person can be nil. So the procedure needs to handle the case where A might be nil. Okay. And we have that. Okay. So, yep, no big deal. Uh, and then this thing. When using var with a ref type of it means the procedure expects a mutable reference to a ref object of the person. The procedure can modify the ref object itself, such as assigning a new person to A or modifying the fields of the object referenced by A. Okay. So that means that we could change the whole pointer to point somewhere else. I see. I need to try if the compiler will even let that because it's, that's where shenanigans happen. Uh, allows the procedure to change the reference itself, potentially making A to point different person object. Mm -hmm. And the person reference must be initialized before being passed to the procedure. So we just do that and it's a var. Okay. Mm -hmm. How does the var type actually modify the value of the object? Does it point to the on the heap and allows for modifying it in place or something like that because i understand when it's on the heap like with the ref type it was already declared on a heap but with a normal type we know that it lives on the stack so i probably made a mistake here because i asked on a heap uh, wait name when you da, 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 also modify object in place while creating a new copy however the exact behavior depends on whether the object is allocated on the stack or the heap uh, when you declare an object of a non-ref type, such as person, in your example, the object is typically allocated on a stack. When you pass the var type to the procedure, nim passes a reference to object's memory location on a stack. This allows the procedure to directly modify the object's fields in place. Okay. So basically, when we have this and we modify the person here by saying age is 30 while name is that, we're here we're directly modifying the stack itself. Okay. Okay. So we're not really doing because I was wondering if it will be when you have this thing, you get like a copy of person that then you modify that copy and then record a, return a copy and it overrides the data on the stack. But no, it's actually just pointing there. That's good to know. Okay. So let me just grab that simple example here. This thing. Because I want to check something. If it actually allows, because as you know, the chat can just just get wonky. So let's do the first one, right? We get the person as variable and we do a dot age and we'll just do increment it. Okay, save. And we just call, let's say variable person is person and we give it name is Ben, age is 100. Okay, uh, now the string just integer. And then we can just do something, right? Uh, we just do person that do something and we'll just do echo person and we'll see what happens save no errors just this complaints that it's not being used and when we run it it increased to 101 so that works so now we can go to the other version where we give it person reference right and we do person reference do something so looks like we can't Get the person reference and turn it to an actual thing. Let's see how to do that. How do I take an instance of person reference and print as an echo its value, not the pointer, just the actual object. The reference, the reference using this operator, this allows you to access the actual object pointed by reference. Oh, so we just do that and that will dereference it. Fancy, bam, save, run. And okay, this modified it to 101, so that's good. But I presume we can't do something where we do return person reference, right? Yeah, because we can't return. So A equals person reference, right? We can't do that because it says, hey, can A cannot be assigned. So we can do basically bar, right? 
and now it's fine. Okay, okay. So the only other part was that if we don't have that var here, and we just get back to the previous where we had a.h, is that we can actually say let person, right? We defined it once, and we can still modify it however many times. It's just we can't modify the whole main thing because if we do a var and a equals, and we have this thing, this expects a var will not let. Okay, that works. That's great. Okay, this is fun. When you start, when it starts clicking in your head, it's actually fun language. Uh, so we went through that. You asked whether there is more concise way of initializing. Yes, in many cases, you want to have the object be reference type, so you can do ref object. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. 